Offensive end, Nate Oates told us yesterday, he said, we had 20 possessions last game on dead ball situations. We scored zero times. I mean, they've got to get, they got to get better at that, but they got to get the tempo and just being a free flowing game. That's where they're at their best. Vandy scored 23 points off of Alabama turnovers in that matchup in February. Crimson Tide 19 and 12 on this season. Part of a log jam in the middle of the league. Among those teams tied at fifth with a nine and nine record. Alabama lost in overtime in its season finale on the road at LSU. They lost the game before that against Texas A&M. They're old for two in March. Here's Pippen mid-range. It's almost like he was too open. Uh, it's going to be a tough task. You have to chase him and not get detached. Quinterly rejected by Liam Robbins. Who was sensational in the previous matchup with Alabama? He's a difference maker for Vanderbilt. The seven foot transfer from Minnesota, out with an injury this year, but they've been a much more competitive team with his presence. For three, off the mark, Noah Gurley keeps it alive. Quinterly, no. Ellis, fouled by Chapman. Rodney Chapman back to action. In last night's game after coming back from an injured hamstring. Dan Oates last year's SEC Coach of the Year. Top five for the National Coach of the Year honors. Won at least one game in the last three NCAA tournaments. That included his closing run at Buffalo. You see the quick trigger early for Alabama. They play with the green light. They play smart. But I think more than ever, they're looking to get shots up quick. Because of their turnover situation the longer the possession the more likely they are uh, to make just a boneheaded decision with the basketball and so Try to take those shots when you got them in the last four games their opponents have scored 94 points Off of Alabama turnover. That is the killer Those opponents LSU A&M South Carolina and it started with this Vanderbilt team. South Carolina put 90 points on it Robbins backing into that gets whistled for the illegal screen And that's one reason Keon Ellis is on the SEC all defense team. He busts through that screen. He's willing to take the hit Vandy looking for its first quarterfinal since 2017 Do you think he folds his suit and puts it in a carry-on the way you and I do? <laughs> I think those things got their own seat on the plane <laughs> Let me clear, don't, don't act like let me don't clear, your suit. <laughs> it's also a different plane. <laughs> That's right. A little more space with a, with a rack in the back. 19 seasons and eight teams in the NBA, two time All Star. After being selected by the Sixers, third overall in 95, after a marvelous career at North Carolina, where he played for the great like push off. Yeah. And another whistle. We're going the other way. That's. On Gurley, you, you can't let Studi get under your skin. I mean, he's the trash talker of Vanderbilt, and he'll bump you. He'll get in your head a little bit. And that time, he got the best of Gurley, who did a push off, wasn't necessary. Pippen short on that one. He's 0 for two, and a first for Quinterly. Got a push and get. Are you kidding me? How fast is that? He goes from basically the SEC logo to the other end in what three dribbles three seconds and one You can't make a quicker play than this one two three 27 on the shot clock That's a one-man fast break one two three we go And a little mess say to spin it in Can't finish it Chapman was headed for the postseason with Dayton a couple of years ago. Flyers are going to be a number one seed. But Obi Toppin dunking on everybody. Here's Wright gets it low. Robbins will shoot a three. Can't make that one. He made a couple threes in the previous matchup with Bama. Nice job by Robbins. Quinterly floats in the air on that pass. Just empty possession there, turnover. Great job by the big man, easy call.
Here's Pippen again. Pippen not only had 26 in the previous matchup, he drew 11 fouls in that game. Chapman lost it. Bama nearly gave it back. Pippen leads the country in fouls drawn for 40 minutes. Quinterly whips it back out. Here's Ellis. And a three after that by Jake Shackelford. That takes me fewer steps to get back to our hotel than he took. <laughs> the penetration kills for Alabama. Get in the lane, paint touch. That's where their open threes come from. For Vanderbilt, they got to get Jordan Wright going. He was ineffective in that first matchup, and it's all about angles for them. They've been very physical with four and black. But here's the seal. Keon Ellis starts on Pippen, then he can switch off, then he creates the turnover. And then this time, almost travels, gets rid of it just in time for Shackleford. Keon Ellis had six turnovers in their last game, and Nate Oates said, hey man, I don't care how good of a defender you are, that doesn't outweigh six turnovers. We can't have you in the game if you don't take care of it. That time, a smart play. Finished with 19 points in that loss at LSU on Saturday. 21 turnovers led to 23 points for LSU. Into the corner for Studi. Mandy 0 for to start this game. Bama looking to add. Oh, breakaway jam! Business decision by Rodney Chapman. Got out of the way. He saw the high flyer coming. Pippen trying to find an answer. Wanted a whistle. Didn't get it. Instead, it's a three in the corner for Studi. Fear. He is a catch and stick kid with a ton of confidence. Shackleford. Wow. I think he's found his stroke, Tom. Here's Studi again, this time the other corner, and he's hit back to back triple. Alabama the other end. What a tempo in this one, and a foul will be offensive on Darius Miles. Uh, these boys are out here letting it fly. <laughs> I mean, give me already nine three point attempts in the first four minutes of this game, and all good looks from your quality three point shooters. Gotta love the tempo of this game. Three offensive fouls already on Alabama. Quinterly will take a seat and we'll see freshman guard JD Davison for the first time. What do you think of Ellis on Pippen? 6'6, six, six, good length. Well, he's got great length, and what you gotta do to disrupt that is run Ellis off a ton of screens. Make him try to keep up that way. Studi was wide right. Rojas tied up and taken away. Fantastic effort by Jordan Wright. We got a whistle away from the ball. We've got a clock issue, and that'll send us to the media timeout. 11 to 6, Alabama with the lead. Crimson Tide willing to push it. They are running. Time All Star. Junior played at Sierra Canyon in Los Angeles. He's carried the hype well, hasn't he? I mean, he's had to his whole life, Scotty Pippen Jr., and then the preseason player of the year never affected him at all. He's continued to. Be a top player in this league. You talking about two years in a row as all SEC player in a time where the SEC has arguably never been better. Ronnie Henderson was the last in the league to average 20 in back-to-back -back seasons. That was 96. Pippen doing what he does best, drawing another foul. If you miss it, he leads the country in fouls drawn per game. And last time against Alabama, he drew 11 fouls. That resulted. And 14 made free throws for Pippen. And Nate Oates hated that call. He had some words for the officials. The arms came down by the defender, but he felt like it was all ball. And didn't agree with the angle the official had to see if it was all ball or not. Bandy started slow, missed its first four attempts from the field, then a couple of threes from Studi, and now Pippen at the free throw line. Right back into this thing. Davidson finds Rojas. Great pass from the freshman who admitted it took him a while to get up to speed in the SEC. Played small school, high school basketball. Calhoun High School, Lido Hatchie, Alabama. And a good job penetrating under control that time. 
Pippen with the three. <laughs> this kid's good. You got to play him off the bounce, off the screens, and then, oh, yeah, he can just pull up and rise over you for the triple. Shackelford size advantage on Thomas ends up going into Melora Brown, and that's the first on Vandy Center. Here's Davidson, look, just under control, draws the defender, finds the cutter, doesn't charge, good play. And then Pippen gets a handoff and just steps back. If you give him any space at all, he's going to try to knock it down, whether it's from three or take you off the bounce. He's got everything in his game. Here's Jaden Shackelford, California native. 78% from the line on the season. Alabama red hot from the floor as a team. They made five straight after an 0-4 start. What do you think of the Vandy band chanting, don't overthink it? <laughs> You've heard some chants from Vandy fans in your, your time. Uh, I, would, I would respond with, I already am. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Here's Pippen. Challenge three. Rojas tees it up. Is the Alabama team shooting only 31% from three? That's 11th in the SEC. And Nate Oates has said, you just got to have the right guy shoot them. But still... It's not just a green light. It's like a, a nuclear green light. Well, in, in a year ago, they had five guys on the court at all times that could pass, shoot, and dribble. Whether it was Alex Reese, Herb Jones, John Petty, of course, and Quinterly Shackleford. I mean, that's what Nate Oates has wanted to do ever since his high school days. Five guys pass, shoot, dribble. Now you look on this roster on the court at any given time, you maybe have two guys that check all those boxes. And so you've seen some of that be the root of the frustration for Nate Oates and this team, which has still been really good offensively, just not to the standard that we're accustomed to. Nice cut. Beautiful defense by Melora Brown, and then they give it right back. And you see Juwan Gary back on the floor. Here's a kick out now with Ellis driving. Gurley for three. The Bigs having a hard time knocking him down. Bama two for seven from three. So, give me the the scouting report. He's he's on the bench right now. They took Pippen out after the foul. I'm sure he'll be right back out there. When he returns, I want to figure out how you would guard him, or you know how you would coach to guard him. Well, ideally, you want Keon Ellis on him to bother him with that length, and then to help Ellis on the ball screens, you got to hedge for a minute and get back. Shot clock late. The zone doesn't see it. They don't get it off. You see the value of Scotty Pippen Jr. Out of sorts on the offensive end. And by the way, if I had the answer on how to guard Scotty Pippen, I want to be with you, buddy. Uh, I'd, I'd be uh, I'd be a double by coach waiting for my opponent on Friday. <laughs> You don't face many of those in the fourth grade Chattanooga Church League basketball. No, you still try to figure out St. Peter's 2 3 zone. <laughs> Quinterly don't bring short. it up. <laughs> Laura Brown's in there fighting down on his knees. Bamba's missed four straight. Here's Wright. Speaking of those top four seeds. Kentucky aiming for a number one seat. Davidson with the feeding and a flush for Jawan Gary. Kentucky and Auburn in line for number one seat. Tennessee might be there as well. They can win the tournament. Baylor's going down to Oklahoma and Kansas City right now. That might be costly for the Bears, and it would certainly cost the Big 12 if they lose and Kansas doesn't win the Big 12 tournament. Uh, I think a one seat is to be had for the SEC tournament champion. Or at minimum, increasing whatever your projected seed is now by one. That could be Arkansas getting to a 4-3. Offensive foul on Rodney Chapman, and that is his second. He disagreed. Alabama's getting down and guarding. I mean, they've been playing with a purpose. And good job by Quinterly getting in there, and officials caught that offhand by Chapman trying to create spaces. 
You know, playing with a bum wheel, really. That hamstring's bothered them all season long. But even if they can get 10 minutes out of them, they're just it, – it, it gives Pippen a breather. Allows Pippen to play off the ball more. So Pippen back on the floor will pick up Crinnerly. Is Shackelford to 15 feet. Robbins with the board. We've had five offensive fouls called in this game. Alabama has been whistled three times. Vandy twice. Robbins battling with Gurley in the post. Loose ball. And a good recovery by Lawrence. Jordan Wright, no. He's the X factor. I don't think Vanderbilt can win this game without Jordan Wright being a double figure. They've gone final now in Kansas City. Baylor lost to Oklahoma. Wonder if that would be enough to cost them a one seed. Another offensive foul. Oh, Nate Oates is about to go crazy. They thought that was a foul on Quinterly, which actually leads to a charge his second. Quinterly picked up his second personal foul. Two charges in the paint. They're probably going to have to play the rest of the half with the reigning tournament MVP on the sidelines. Here's Pippen. And we got a three-second call and a Vanderbilt turnover. Elsewhere in college basketball, told you Oklahoma knocked off Baylor 72 to 67. TCU had a comeback against a ranked Texas team in the Big 12. St. John's is leading eighth-ranked Villanova late. So there are upsets out there. There might be some bid thieves hanging around. Davidson saw that Dane was open. <laughs> By the way, bubble team Wyoming got a win in the Mountain West tournament today. They hung on. Shackelford, no. Indiana knocked off Michigan. There's a couple of bubble teams, at least on the Indiana side. They're trying to prove their way in. Wright got taken down coming up the curl and that's on Jawan Gary and we'll have free throws Jordan Wright freshman from Baton Rouge yeah, He was just one of six in that last game against Alabama He's really been a mismatch problem in a lot of games, but every once in a while he goes up against an opponent with similar size Doesn't let him get the angles Really got himself in shape one of the most improved players in the SEC part of stacks first recruiting class They need him to be him In this game, they're gonna pull off the upsets Dropped 20 pounds in the offseason getting ready for this one school record points at the Dunham school And Baton Rouge will push ahead for Bama Jerry Stackhouse in the set post game last night said, you know, where we are complicated is really on the defensive side. I, I pride myself in being a great defensive coach and talking to him about what they do defensively over the last couple of years. He said, we can get sophisticated business standpoint of some of our rotations. It's a defense that has been very good over the course of his time at, at Vandy. And a very confident team. And they play like they're supposed to win the game. You couldn't always say that about the Vanderbilt Commodores. And what I've loved about Jerry Stackhouse's approach is shoot arounds behind the scenes. Never once has he mentioned, I got to get some more recruits. Wait till I get some more guys in here. All that stuff. I mean, he's ready to go to battle with his guys. And he believes in, in every other. All of them. If you said a bad word about Trey Thomas or anybody else, he'd kick you out of practice. And when you think about all the talent he's been surrounded by, an Oak Hill product, North Carolina, NBA, he doesn't use that as an excuse at all. Shackleford deep. Got it. It's just a really nice play by your big man Gary who gets it in the paint instead of taking a 15 foot low percentage shot Like a point guard finds a shooter
Gurley is all over Robbins. Pippen able to draw the foul off Gary coming around the curl. Second on Jawan Gary. Here's Gary, just a nice penetrate pitch. Shackelford always thought it's interesting how he lines up his feet. I mean, he literally points his shoes towards the sideline on his shot. He's riding goofy. That's how you're going to ride that scooter home tonight after the game. <laughs> Hanging on for dear life. Pippen has played on some star set of teams, just like you mentioned, Jerry Stackhouse. That's here Cannon, BJ Boston, Zaire Williams, Ronnie James. Here are those feet. I mean, you, it's like a batting stance. Yeah, you typically want them facing the rim, and he's always just had them pointed towards your sideline or baseline, depending where he's shooting from. Who am I to correct? One of the best three point shooters in the SEC. Quinn Malora Brown just got sent to the bench to try to get cleaned up. And athletic trainer Brandon Wells with Deuce has got that big scratch on his neck. And as long as it's not actively bleeding, he's good to go. He does have a fencing background. <laughs> accustomed to <laughs> such injuries. That might be reflective of the physical style in tonight's game. Best defensive league in college basketball. The SEC leads all leagues in block percentage and steal percentage. 11% blocks, 12, 11% steals. It's 22% of your possessions, not including if you get the ball back after a block. So you lose to a turnover. Betiaco, the freshman center. Eller steps through. Wow. That's tough right there. Keon Ellis. You talk about taking your time on your footwork and avoiding the defenders. That's about as graceful as you can get. Handoff for Lawrence. Shot clock at nine. Pippen going to work. Got space. Wanted the foul. He missed that wide left. Immediately upon land, he asked for the call. What a move and a finish. And that'll be Bediaco going to the line. I couldn't tell if it got poked away or behind the back dime. We'll see here. But he sees his big man trailing and says, No, you ain't getting my cookie, Scotty. I'm dumping it off to my big man for the M1. J.D. Davidson has really pushed the fast break effectively for Alabama. We saw the lob dunk to Gary that time. Mediaco. Rebounded by Wright. Scotty Pippen really concerned with the call that he did not get on that jump shot. Whether he was fouled or not, he doesn't usually miss a jumper that wide. And he got the whistle there. It's just the classic you reach, I teach by Scotty Pippen. It, it, it gets. It, you sound like a broken record. Scotty Pippen to the free throw line. What I love about him, though, is we know how good of a player is, but he's at his best against the best. He averages 24 points and six, against, six assists against ranked teams. This was the jump shot a moment ago. Got a hand on the elbow. Yeah, Pippen looks for it right away. And that's a five point swing because it led to two for Bama. And some of Pippen's biggest games have come against Kentucky in the last couple of years. He's made no bones about it. That is an important game to him. Here's Shackelford again. An air ball. Pippen had 33 in the game at Rupp this year. He did it primarily from two. And they'll get right for the foul. 
Eight-point advantage for six-seed Alabama, the defending tournament champs. On a I, mean, I think Mississippi State feels very confident that they can take Tennessee down the wire. Alabama, Vanderbilt, they've played Kentucky well. A&M playing for their tournament lives, needing that big quad one win against Auburn. Wouldn't be surprised at all if there's a little bit of an upset on Friday. Another one coming for Davidson, member of the SEC All-Freshman team. Had 20 points in the early season win against Gonzaga, then the third-ranked team in the country, now the number one team. I think Davidson's playing some great basketball at the point guard spot. No turnovers while Quinterly sits on the bench with those two persons. Guarding Studi now, and he'll switch on to Pippen. Talk with Tom Green about the difficulty of guarding Scotty Pippen Jr. And he referenced how he's able to draw fouls by getting into you. And he said it's not just a uh, head bob. What he does really well to sell it, contact or not, is when the shoulders move. And that's a key for officials. The head, a lot of guys throw the head back and they don't get touched. Betty Ako got his feet moving too fast. Nate Oates is fired up early. Is that what you heard, Alyssa? A couple of times I've been over to the Alabama huddle. That's been a major point of emphasis for head coach Nate Oates. Emphasizing, let's not commit silly fouls right now. Vanderbilt, 7 of 8 from the free throw line. You just mentioned Scotty Pippen Jr. doing a really good job of drawing those fouls. He's been pointing for some of them tonight. Nate Oates wants to make sure they don't give them any more than they have to. Yeah, that's the only place he's been efficient tonight. He's just 1 for 7 from the floor. But five of six at the line. Davidson with the lob. Badiaco the jam. Again, another great drive under control. I think Alabama has learned early. They got caught with some charges floating in the lane. Making sure you have enough space to land without charging. Nice lob. Studi again. He's hit two from the corner, but that one couldn't find the rim. Feels like we're on the verge of an Alabama blowout. Into the corner. Three ball. And it'll go the other way. And it'll be a whistle against Alabama and just one hold. Didn't play last time out. Good to have him back. Go. You see the defender come at you, and if the defender helps uphill, usually something's open downhill. And Melora Brown gets caught on the help. No rotation. It's already the Betty fourth up. assist for the freshman I'm Davis. Talking, man, he, he's, he's not playing like a freshman. He, he's been a little bit inconsistent, of course, but Coach Oates applauded. He said, look, his effort's gotten better. I need him to handle adversity better throughout the course of a game, though. And so right now things are going good, but if he doesn't get a call if he turns it over something to keep an eye on Can he move on to the next play? Another one coming from Miles Studi freshman from Washington DC DC at a Gonzaga prep Donald's All-American Missed opportunity at the free throw line for Vanderbilt. Down 10. Rojas now. Back out to Shackelford. Into the corner. Holt shares it. Shot clock winding down. Shackelford. Good handles. Here's Holt. Couple of missed threes for Alabama on their last two trips. Oh, Robbins taken down, uh, took down Rojas, excuse me, and Rojas not happy. And he'll separate them. I'm not sure they won't review this from a hook and hold standpoint. I mean, no, no hook and hold, but physicality with Robbins doesn't like. How the Alabama bigs are fronting him, denying him the ball. Gets whistled for one.
tell you, Stackhouse is saying, you guys see what happened. He wants him to take a look at that. It's a, as it stands, a third on Robbins. And Stack can't believe that they called a foul on Robbins out of that. But I, th I think you were right with the fronting. He was trying to create some space on the back end by clearing out the high post. And really, he didn't need to get into a fist fight at the elbow. I mean, if they're going to front you that high, you've got so much room on the backside. Just get your teammates to lob it up. I mean, look, look how much space he's going to have behind him. Don't get in a fight here. You're good. Let him lob it over the top. If they're going to front you out there 14, 15 feet away, let him do it. I mean that that's now with that tough. review. Did you see the Rojas arm that got up and underneath Robbins? You could still have a common foul on Robbins and get a hook and hold on Rojas. It was hard to see originally, but then right before they went down, Rojas with the arm that came underneath Robbins. And that's what Stack was asking them to take a further look at. Well, they could, you know, they could upgrade Robbins to a flagrant, which I don't think is going to happen. They could they could call a flagrant. But you can't go back and reverse and say a hey, foul on uh, or, or add a foul to uh, to Rojas. That was efficient. After all that, just a common foul. I don't blame Stackhouse for wanting to take a look at it. I mean, it, it looks more complicated live than it did with the replay seven offensive fouls called in this game how about your guy ed conroy I mean, they're not a harder working better assistant in the league than my guy ed conroy had the pleasure of playing for him at tennessee and happens to be the uncle of lee of robbins a little bit of a package deal jerry stackhouse been trying to recruit ed conroy to his staff for many years also was trying to get Liam Robbins the first time he transferred from Drake to Minnesota Happened to get both of from Minnesota after they had some changes up there. Yeah five years with Richard Patino There's James Rojas. I Just thought you were a fan of the Conroy family because you too are a famous author <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure the book sales were quite quite as high for the Bradshaw family Rojas into Pippen you just can't hedge that aggressively. You got to move laterally. If you're not there in time to force Pippen back the other direction, and you don't have the right angle, he's gonna. That's just clockwork for him. He's gonna attack that hip. Pippen five or six from the line. A little surprised Rojas is letting the guards have the inside rebounding position. They were laughing about it just now. Uh, that's why he knew he was coming out. He's been really the vocal leader for Nate Oates in a frustrating season where Coach Oates has probably spent more time correcting previous plays rather than coaching the next play. Rojas has been a steady, reliable veteran for his team. Why Why has that happened with this team? Well, yeah, usually you quit talking about the previous team stars in November, December, but here we are in March, and we're still talking about Herb Jones. I mean, he was just such a smart player. And it wasn't just him. Alex Reese, John Petty, those guys could clean up mistakes. But, but this Alabama team on the season has not – than what you would call a high IQ team and the turnovers show it and they just don't have that one player that makes everybody around them better So here's Holt to the free throw line freshman From Tacoma, Washington Four-star recruit Miles Studi not happy with the officiating said I'm just gonna put this right here and roll it over there and the officials not a fan of that move. Owen oh, Short says, "Hey, how about you just <laughs> hand us the basket?" Yeah, I would have said, "Hey, man, go pick that up and <laughs> bring it over to me." Leads eleven for Bama. Certainly not insurmountable, but Vanderbilt hasn't shown much efficiency on the offensive end. Pippen with an air ball. Well, and they can't 
expect Pippen to carry him and just go get him 30 or 40 to keep him in the game. Uh, outside of those Studi triples that he had early in this game, they've got nothing outside of Pippen offensively, and even he has certainly had his struggles other than the free throw line. Four made buckets for Vandy, three of them from deep. Here's Shackelford. Davidson, little push shot didn't go, and then Vandy fought for it and lost it. Tom, one of the things for Vanderbilt is, like a lot of teams in SEC uh, in the SEC that will see this in the tournament, the scattering reports out on everybody. You know your tendencies. When you get to March, do you have individual players that can win their individual matchups? And right now you look at Vanderbilt, how many guys you say, hey, if they're getting covered and the other team takes it away, can they still go create something? And you look out for Vanderbilt, you got one person that can do it. And a Vanderbilt turnover. Tipping one ready for the pass from Melora Brown. Keon Ellis has made Pippen's touches tough. He's making Pippen Jr. work as much as Pippen Jr. is making him work. Thomas Oliver Davidson extending the defense. Pardon me, Chapman, and it ends up in a foul. And that is his third. J.D. Davidson from Lido, Hatchie, Alabama, home of Busted Knuckles Auto Repair on Chicken Pin Road. He's going to work. Hey, he's over here setting a three because they've got what they wanted. They got the rotation. They got the paint touch. And shoot that thing. Shackelford shooting it from deep. And the way they shoot with no hesitation because he tells his guys, look, if you turn down a good look, it doesn't mean that we're going to get a better look in the possession. I want you playing with the freedom to knock it down. 16 points in the paint, nine from three-point line. All three threes belong to Shackelford. The rest of the team 0 for 5. I'm glad we had a swivel chair during that segment. You were nice to kind of swivel <laughs> me around casually. We brought him in just for that shot. They're going to take him away now at halftime. I'm requesting a beanbag. <laughs> Laura Brown looking for an assist, turned it over. Holt with the takeaway. When you talk about what Alabama wants to do offensively, it's not just the threes, but obviously the rim twos. They are eight of 11 at the rim. Another nice attack by Davison. They just move so well on the penetration. It's never just one guy flying in. I was talking with an assistant coach, too, that just complimented how good they are on offensive rebounds on their drives they always have somebody coming around the basket to get the offensive put back they hadn't had to rely on it much in this game with six offensive rebounds but in conference play they lead the league in offensive rebounds at 14 and much of that can be contributed to the way they attack the basket so aggressively well that's six best in the country at 13 and a half offensive rebounds per game for this Alabama team. Now, a portion of that is the tempo with which they play and the number of shots that they get up. But even if you include the tempo, 36% of their misses are gathered by Alabama, and that's second best in the league. Gurley was three time All Southern Conference with the Furman Paladins before transferring to Alabama. Thirteen point Bama lead Betty Ako returns for the tie Right took Davison into end and I like it. He's got to get aggressive Vandy just two for its last 11 
Shackelford with five. So what you're saying is you wouldn't teach that footwork, but Shackelford makes it look pretty hey, he good. He can do it, man. He's been doing it for years. And such good action there. Just two-man game up top. Penetrate pitch. Keon Ellis. Shackelford just shot ready. Davison tied him up. That's his first. Uh, and the other issue is when you're closing out with 5'11", Trey Thomas, Shackelford's a big guard, man. That, that does not bother him at all. 0 for 8 at LSU. Did not finish the game in overtime based on more of his defensive performance. Oh. He might be turning the page at just the right time in the SEC tournament the way he started this game. Second team all conference honors for Shackelford. Jordan Wright, another one. He's perfect from the line so far. Here's Holt. Well, if we learn anything from the AM Florida game earlier, it's uh, stay tuned on double digit leads. That one got interesting real quick, and Vanderbilt's going to have to make some of those. Man draws the foul. I mean, man saw eight minutes of action last night. Jerry Stackhouse was able to empty his bench early on. That's a second on Keon Ellis. Our fouls collecting for Bama. Quinterly two, Ellis two, Gary two, Miles a pair. <laughs> Quinterly will return. Interesting substitution. You sat him this long, right? With two fouls. Nobody watching. And look at Nate Oates. I mean, that that's where. He's got to try to move on to the next play, but where you just shake your head as a coach and say, I mean, that's not something I should have to coach right there. Don't throw it ahead to your player if he's not even looking for the ball. Nice pass from Pippen. Laura Brown gets it. Alabama's still turning it over. They've copped it up eight times, and Vandy only four points off those turnovers. Joined us late, 94 points from Alabama, Alabama uh, opponents off turnovers over the last four games. I think they've played a cleaner, smarter game. Not perfect. Certainly didn't show it there. Winterly Jr. from Hackensack, New Jersey, started his college career at Villanova. He was a McDonald's All-American at Hudson Catholic back in 2018. We're going to play for Jay Wright. You know one thing I do like about that. We just we got the benefit being courtside here. Quinterly looks at JD Davidson after that miscue before, and he's laughing. He's smiling a little like, "Hey man, my bad. I, I thought I thought you were looking." Like to me, it's still not a good problem to have, but at least they're communicating through it instead of pointing fingers. Pippen trying to get into Shackelford and then Bediaco, and he's able to draw the foul on a seven foot freshman. Well, when you've got twice as many free throw makes as you do field goal makes. 
There's some good news to that, but there's some bad news. Yeah. Seven of nine from the free throw line with dad watching. Just one of nine from the floor. Bet you didn't know um, you might be sitting next to the 1991 MVP of the Scotty Pippen camp at Central Arkansas. <laughs> Did not know that. Yep. Did he present you with a trophy? Well, let me ask you, was he present at his own camp? I set myself up for this. Yeah, he was present. I got to meet him. I I expected a greater bond. Like, I had a lot of <laughs> Like, I thought awards day, I was going to get MVP, and he was going to give me some love. We were, like, going to become friends, man. Like, he was my hero. I think they started training camp early in Chicago or something on that awards day. The assistant coach for Central Arkansas gave me the award, which quite as fulfilling. <laughs> I'd like to think I've gotten it over. Gotten over. Did you bring it with you to Tampa? Did you go show it to Scotty? How was the camp T-shirt? Oh, it was purple and white. Central Arkansas. Forget the uh, forget their mascot at Central Arkansas. Sixteen seconds left in the half. Salty over here, man. <laughs> Dad had a big growth spurt when he was in college that got him on the radar of the scouts. And you, know, you wonder if Scottie Pippen Jr. was even 6'5 instead of 6'3. Yeah. Would it be a, a different game, a different potential? He went to the floor there. Clock is at 1. Shackleford, an air ball, and that's how the half will come to an end. Nate Oates likes threes and rim twos. They go 4 of 15 from three and this is an Alabama team that has struggled from three over with coach Stackhouse coming out of the locker room guys I asked him what the message was at the half to his team he said well obviously our top two shooters haven't connected on enough shots so far we have to weather the storm though I asked him if he said anything to Scotty Pippen about all the whistles and how physical this game has been so far he said yeah I told him it's going to even out let the game come to you don't panic we haven't played our bet best basketball but we're only down 10 this is still a game only down 10 there's been very little flow for Vanderbilt in this game and they fell behind 8 nothing to Alabama and then the Crimson Tide went on a nice little roll And they haven't looked back since. Here's Shackleford. And he drills the three. And a disappointing start for Vanderbilt where I'm sure the message was get out on Shackleford. Made him put it on the floor. Yes, he's good from two, but he is lethal from three. Jordan Wright got deep and lost the basketball. Betty Aco couldn't quite handle it, deflected before it got to him. And now Gurley, size advantage on Chapman. Yeah, but easier to handle if you catch that thing with two hands. Betty Aco trying to catch it with one leads to a turnover. There you go. Yeah, just got a little snake dribble there. Chapman probes the defense. It's an easy two. I mean, this thing is not out of reach for Vanderbilt, despite the fact that they have not been able to connect at all. Quinterly leads it short. Opportunity for Vandy. Chapman leading the three on three. Here's Pippen. In traffic, it'll go to the line. I love Rodney Chapman. I mean, he, he's the old man of the team, man. and he he kind of plays that way, old man pickup style. He pushes the fast break. He lets everybody else get ahead of him. He says, I got this. You guys just sprint the court. I'm going to stay back here. I'll kick it ahead and make the right play. Sets up Pippen. Pippen, 8 of 10 from the free throw line.
13 now for Pippen. Bama started with an 8-0 lead, led by as many as 14, and led all but 50 seconds of the first 20 minutes. Wright's got it. Here's Pippen. Corner three, Chapman. Bediaco will start the break. Gurley in the open floor. And once again, Vandy with an opportunity. Chapman for three. Oof. Great hustle by Pippen. And Vandy saves the possession. Well, that is a big time play by Scotty Pippen Jr. Reading that air ball. And beats everybody to this loose ball. And how about that hustle? And he was boxed out. He just fought through it. Saves a possession for Vanderbilt. All right, so there's a guy that you were a huge fan of growing up, Scotty Pippen. We, we couldn't get you the award from his camp. What if, though, I offered you something different? I don't trust you, but go ahead. Well, we'll wait to a dead ball. He's not the only I see. <laughs> He's not the only world champion in the house who wore the uniform of your favorite team. And we got a tie up and a position. Where going? Vanderbilt alum. Tie ball position, Alabama. Tell you this Commodore team has a lot of belief, and it has not been pretty at all. But every time they get a hustle play or the defensive stop at the end of the half, I mean, that bench was up. They're, they're encouraged. They're not going to go away. Shackle first. Well, that's a tough foul for Melora Brown to pick up. Yeah, and it's a lob, and Betty Ako jumps over the back, and Melora Brown's like, hey. I have a right to my space, too. I'm just standing there. I don't think he undercut him. That's just such a tough cover for Chapman with Quinterly speed on the baseline out of bounds. Doing some of those hidden points throughout the course of the game. Nice set play. By Nato. Another offensive rebound for Vanderbilt. And the result is a three for Studi, his third. Winterly lost his footing and he spikes it off Malore Brown. Scotty Pippen in good enough. How about Will Purdue? Yes. 1988 SEC Player of the Year. That's a class act right there. I've gotten to meet him. Be around him several times. That's the man. We almost have enough bowls for a documentary in the building. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get their version of it. Shackleford's got 20 already. Vanderbilt is getting beat by one player on Alabama's team. That's Jaden Shackleford. He's got six triples in this game. If they can find somebody to chase this guy, again, that's too much space when you're playing out. But they do so many good things on the offensive end, does Alabama with the movement. And they don't let the ball stick. When they catch that ball, it is pass, shoot, dribble right away. But nobody is being a ball stopper at all for the Crimson Tide. Informed the Vanderbilt Commodores, number 21, Liam Robbins, back in for Alabama, number 14. Alabama, excuse me, Vanderbilt, they got to have a momentum changing type play. I don't know if it's a big block, a steal, a live ball turnover, something. Get this thing at that six to eight point range, start to get some momentum. Alabama just so comfortable right now offensively. That doesn't happen very often. Pippen fails from the free throw line. Now 10 of 14. Maybe Robbins gives that to him. I mean, you look at who's on the floor right now for Vandy. The most likely thing from momentum Turner is, you know, a couple of big threes. 
for an and one for Pippen. Alabama is such a tough team to trap because of how quickly quick they move the ball. Right stepped on the end line. It'll be a timeout on the floor. The Alabama holding a comfortable 46-35 lead. But Vanderbilt is. I think one thing for Vanderbilt too is Scottie Pippen struggling offensively. But it's been so hard because how he's had to work on the defensive end against Shackleford. I mean, he's the best shot they got at trying to stop him. And you can't tell me that doesn't wear him down some on the offensive end. There's Davison getting it done inside. Davison is a scorer. He had 45 points in his final high school game. He went 18 of 23 in that game. Davison's dunk on Walker Tesla. Here's Robbins. Speaking of the great dunks this season, you think Davison's flush over Walker Kessler's best of the year? I do. I think it is. There, there's been. I got to tell you, the uh, uh, Cario Oquendo for Georgia over Vescovy was a good one. We need to leave the person that got dunked on off. I disagree. Right? Yeah. I did, <laughs> and I talked to Walker Kessler about it. <laughs> so, it so, you sound like a man that's never been dunked on on live TV before. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm no, thinking that. No, I'm but excited. here's what makes them special is because we name a victim, right? It's not just an open floor dunk. There's somebody there trying to defend it. And I, Kessler and I laughed about it a little bit afterwards, and he said, listen, I'm a shot blocker. You think I'm just yeah. going to let him dunk it? I'm going to go up, and I'm going to try to block his shot, and sometimes you get dunked. Yeah. Yeah. Anderson Garcia had a good one uh, against an unnamed Vanderbilt player. <laughs> okay. I don't know what we've been through, Tom Hart. You're supposed to challenge it, I've right? Got PTSD. Yeah, or you just him. bail. Now we talked about uh, an SEC dunk contest. Darius Miles is in it. I mean, they got a couple guys: Miles, Davison. I bet Keon Allen, Keon Ellis. He's got he's got some bunnies too now. You better go ahead and name everybody else because you're going to start getting some tweets from players saying hold on I, I think i qualify as the best dunker in this league hey i'm just here to protect the, the poor souls that got caught in the wrong place at the wrong time rojas fighting for the rebound a jump ball as he goes to the floor you mentioned how to defend scotty pippen well He's had a hard time knocking down shots. He's just one for 12, and these are shots he usually makes. Yeah, and the Vanderbilt team that shot it so well last night against Georgia had a ton of confidence. Pippen didn't get the call on that one. And he's missed a couple open ones, but his, his looks have been really tough. And I think Alabama's done a really nice job chasing him, defending the ball screen action. They've switched some. And when you can switch and the next guy can guard him too, yeah, that makes life a lot easier for you, and Alabama's had that luxury in this game. Jordan Wright will try to catch his breath. He'll go to the free throw line. It's a second by James Rojas. At the line with two shots, will be Jordan Wright. SEC Scholar Athlete of the Year, the third player in Vandy history to take home that honor. Andrew Vanderbilt, number 12, Trey Thomas. In for Alabama, number 13, Javon Quimbley. 3-5-3 GPA. In human and organizational development. Here's Ellis. Wow. That qualifies as a tough two. You talk about seeking out the contact and finishing through it. That's a prime example. Studi trying to whittle away at what was the largest lead of the game for Alabama. 
If you told me Studi would have four threes for Vanderbilt, I'd tell you this is a one possession game. Yeah. And they just haven't had enough of a supporting cast. What if to add to that, I told you that Pippen was 10 of 14 from the free throw line? I'd say that's a problem, too. But it, it's not the 10 of 14, because look, he. He's he's a good free he's he's better at getting to the free throw line in an elite way than he is converting. It's seventy three percent that's good, but it's it's the one of twelve from the field that certainly is is concerning and you see him having to work right now. Keon Ellis all over. Oh, they lost him there. The struggles continue. An off night for Pippen. Shock like a ten, they'll fire another. Studi gets it! They are not going quietly into the night. There you go. Single digits. Plenty of time left. Is Pippen the type of player that can turn a one for 13 into four consecutive makes? Oh, yeah, absolutely. He, he's going to keep attacking. We saw in our first game, uh, Iverson Molinar. He went two of for his first 11. They're going to keep giving him the ball. His usage rate is way too high. Pippen in the paint. Timeout taken, Nate Oates. Vandy has made it a seven-point game. Just like you mentioned, our first game of the day, Florida fought back to force overtime. And if I'm Alabama and Coach Nate Oates, I, you know, I like some of the two-man action with Quinterly and Ellis up top here, just not to be so reliant on Shackleford. Shackelford with his 11 20 point game of the season 24th of his career Oates said he Wanted some of those threes to come a little bit closer. That one was just fine, but off the mark Vandy's issues turnovers in the first half that coughed it up nine times only one turnover in the second half Nice pass Pippen through the foul that's a nice post pass there. Good cut by Pippen Jr. It looks like the correct call as Shackleford comes through. But Melora Brown, a guy that can really play through, a glue, glue guy for this team, and one of the most underrated, improved players in the league. And that time shows you his ability to find the cutter. 15th trip to the free throw line for Scotty Pippen Jr. tonight. And Tom, no matter how bad it got for Vanderbilt, they never let this game just completely get away from them. It was always around 10 to 12. And give them credit for just hanging tough through some of these scoring droughts. Great defense, and they turn them over. Thomas transition three. Bama finds it. And Quinterly will push. If you're Nate Oates, you got to be able to trust your point guard. And, oh. and here it is again. Just back to back. It. Thomas with the finish that time. Let me ask you, is, is Alabama at this point, as the lead has been shrunk to just three, are they better running in tempo or better running clock? I uh, still like them in tempo, but they, they just, it, it's baffling, really. And you just see some of the carelessness and a, an elite ball handler in Quinterly just too loose with it. Pippen couldn't finish up close, and he fought for it. Go back to your question. I, I think you still got to play Alabama basketball. You can't become conservative. They're getting off quick shots, but Gary misses the bunny. No numbers for Dezoni. He's going to push anyway. Got the bucket, and he got the foul. Wow, what a push there by Dezoni, and realizes the defender is not going to be there in time. It's a big-time stop, a big-time bucket, challenging everybody to step up and make some good plays to try to get some momentum back in this one. Thank you, Shane Dezoni at the free throw line. That missed layup by Alabama is about as quality of yeah. shot as you're going to get. And let's go back to what Nate Oates told us in the shoot-around. Last game, they had 20 possessions 
on dead ball situations, they got zero field goals out of them. So he knows this is a team better in the open court. They got to play that way. Another missed layup out of bounds off of Vanderbilt. This is an interesting situation where Shackelford on the bench with four fouls and Quinterly. Your other best option has five turnovers in 15 minutes, so not playing with much confidence himself. Alabama only three for seven at the rim in the second half. That'll do it. That'll do it. You're Quinterly's right. first triple. Sometimes when your other star is on the bench, you know it's your time. It can help erase some of those bad plays quicker. Great step up, big shot by Quinterly. Has ruled a two. They'll take a look at it next step ball. Stewart, he can't answer. Rebounded. By Quinterly. He'll push. El, uh, pardon me, Miles. Another missed layup. They're going to get a foul on DeZoni, who didn't even look like he was in on the play. And see, I love this response from Quinterly. The maturity. He, he makes the shot. He gets the defensive rebound. He pushes it up the court. And he's the first one after this miss where he huddles everybody up. And he's talking to his teammates, being a leader instead of hanging his head. You, you want to see maturity out of a guy that. You know, has had a roller coaster season himself, and Coach Oates wants them to have a learn from their mistakes, but have a short memory afterwards. Quinterly doing a nice job of that here in recent minutes. Nate Oates going for a walk, clear as mind at second glance. Change of zone, he did get Miles with the arm bar. 77% from the free throw line of the season for Miles. How do you solve a turnover problem? Well, you try to simplify things on offense and you just try to go point A, point B, take a shot as opposed to A, B, C, D. The longer the possession, the more likely the turnover. But some of these are just so careless. It's just, guys, it's accountability, responsibility. When the ball is in your hands, the program is in your hands. I mean, you, you have to value it that much. Bama only 12 of 22 from the free throw line. Foul on the drive. Pull the chair a little bit on that one. Talking about the turnover problem. Look, you, you just got to be able to handle the ball in a high ball screen situation and then loose with it here, too, gets away from him. And Nate Oates was talking to his team about momentum changing plays, and that's exactly what Vanderbilt got in order to get back in this game. Those live ball turnovers. Huge momentum swing. That was the fourth now on Quinterly. So Javon Quinterly and Jaden Shackelford each have four personal fouls with still 10 minutes remaining in this game. Thomas, too big, three, uh, free throw. Quinterly's got to be smart if he gets the ball in these drives. Two of those four fouls are on charges. Rojas rejected from behind by Wright. Well, this is just good help defense here. Right read by Davison and builds the wall. Help comes over offside block. And then Thomas got his hands on it. Three on nothing. Wright chance it home. It's a one point game. Another Alabama turnover. Quinterly. No. Right again. You said he was the X Factor. He's playing like it in the second half. Pippen splits the defense and draws the foul. Bandy looking for its first lead of the night. Wow. I mean, this looked like this was not going to be Vanderbilt's night. They couldn't buy a bucket in the first half. But here they are, creating offense from their defense. Some of it certainly self-inflicted. Got to be able to take the ball out of bounds, but it is just pick six after pick six for Vanderbilt. And then doing what they do best, getting to the strike. 11 of Vandy's 55 points have come off of turnovers. Pippen's got an 18-point night. 
He had seven straight 20 point games going into last night's Georgia blowout where he was only on the floor for 23 minutes because the game was in hand. Vandy's got its first lead of the game. Pippen guarding Davison. Ellis, quick three. Fouled on the three! It's a third on Jordan Wright. Coach Stackhouse wants him to take a look at it, said he kicked his leg out. Thought it should have been an offensive foul, but he did extend it towards the end, but I think he got him on that follow through. If you're only looking at the legs, and that's where my focus was, Ellis's foot came down a foot, you know, 18 inches in front of the three-point line. Jerry Sackhouse has a point. Did you see contact above the waist? Yeah, I thought the follow-through, you got to give a chance to finish that shot there. Another one coming for Ellis. Alabama back in front. Shackelford will get a breather. I think the question will be, to, has Vandy expended too much energy to fight back? Do they have fuel in the tank to stick with this for another nine minutes? Uh, I think they do, but it'll also help when you've got two of the best scoring guards in the SEC sitting there on the bench for Alabama. Quinlan and Shackelford both over there. I'm sure Nato's trying to buy time until this under eight media timeout before putting at least one of them back in. Pippen down the lane against Betty Yako. Seven footer got in the way. It'll be Alabama basketball. Scotty Pippen's changing the defenses here. But they missed an opportunity to just go get this thing to not even make the rest blow the whistle Alabama gets it Pippen was talking to Thomas he said you take him I'll take him and now he'll come out on Davison and Now it's Pippen having to run through screens Shot clock at six Ellis will tee one up Offensive board Gets the end one. A big time tough bucket. I mean, this is a freshman they typically put in to send a message defensively to other guys, hold them accountable. But here he is contributing on the offensive end. When Coach Oates asked for a momentum type play, he may have just got one. Jerry Stackhouse is all over this officiating crew. Got a coach's box warning after arguing about the whistle. And I think it probably goes back to that three in the corner a possession or two ago. At least the frustration. Here's Holt. Bama back in front by five. Was the impetus for the coach's box warning? Pippen, ball fake, forces it in, and he got another whistle. Yeah, these guys are just so tough to keep out of the paint. Terrific penetration there by Pippen Jr. Another. It's it, you want to try to make it difficult, but they just stay in attack mode. It's his 18th 20-point game this season, 26 of his career. He has five 30-point games. I mean, there's still eight minutes left in this contest. The free throw was not close. Shackleford both back on the floor, trying to draw a foul. And the loose ball picked up by Robbins. 
Delora Brown commits a foul this time. Excuse me, they said Betty Aka. It's his third, Melora Brown on the other end now. If you're Shackelford, who's back on the floor now, Quinterly will stay on the bench for another minute with Davison in run and play. How do you how do you play aggressively and fast but in control? As a team, it's got to start with getting some traditional stops on the other end. I mean, when you're going up against a set defense each time up and down the court, your offense is just not going to be as efficient. And that's been the issue all year for Alabama. Yes, Nate Oates and his system get a lot of credit for their offense. But what made them so elite last year was their efficiency on the defensive end that complemented their offense. Nate Oates says no, go to the other side. Davidson will start it there. Shot clock already now at eight. Pippen with the reach and got away with one. Shot clock at three. Davidson trying to get a shot off. Floater. No good. Rebounded by the smallest man on the floor. 5'11", Trey Thomas. The amount of players Nate Oates had to tell on that possession where to be is concerning. And you know they practiced it, but having to remind these guys over and over again of where to go on a pretty basic play. Thomas, no. Mandy's shots just aren't falling. Here's Davidson, forehead of steam. Bediaco, blind shot, puts it in. Nice hustle by the big man to run the court. Don't expect the ball to go in. Be there for the offensive putback. Pippen not wasting any time. Jordan Wright buries it. A big shot. He's gotten himself back into this game. Almost a double-double at this point, quietly having an impact. I think Trey Thomas has a hamstring injury right now. Reaching for his left hamstring, the bench is telling him if you're hurt, just have him stop play. Bama hasn't noticed it yet. Miles will try to drive on him. Thomas couldn't move his feet. How about the big fella running? Yeah, sprinting the floor and just right place, right time. But the harder you work, the luckier you get. And there he is getting rewarded. And Jordan Wright, who, who's got a nice mid-range game. I'm glad he took this shot because sometimes he waits for the open look instead of maybe forcing the issue at times. Very capable player of making some of those tough contested twos. Shackleford turns the corner. Hard drive and kick again. And then a step on the end line and another Alabama turnover. Darius Miles commits the 15th of the night for Alabama. They are already over their per game average of turnover. Pippen against a seven footer. Finds right. Davidson, he can run with it. He finds hope for the jam. That's beautiful basketball by Davidson. I mean, he kept his head up, attacked the rim, saw the two defenders, but always was looking for that trail man. Wide open three, Chapman. Nice. Rodney Chapman's first triple comes at an opportune time for Vandy. Mr. Reliable for the Commodores. They're 8-3 and three with him on the floor, 8-12 and 12 without. He spent a good chunk of this season fighting his way back from a hamstring injury. Late in the clock again. Remember, starting court guard Javon Quinterly on the bench in foul trouble. Shot clock at 3. Davison get a pull. Then Iaco pulls it down, and then Pippen strips it from him. Oh, that's the problem. He pulled it down. Chapman goes in to Holt, gets a whistle, and Alabama's making all the mistakes. Vandy, the smart plays. It's Bama. J.D. Davidson pushing the fast break and realizes he's got numbers trailing him. 
beautiful pass. And then Chapman, calm, cool, collected, buries it. And then here, you, you just got to keep that ball high if you're Betty Alco. All you got to do is come down on two feet, keep it above your head, and it's two points. Instead, Pippen Jr. opportunistic on that one. Rodney Chapman rolls it home. He's got six. Started 31 games, one of the best teams in the country a couple of years ago at Dayton. They missed an opportunity to pick up a number one seed in the NCAA tournament, and COVID canceled it. There's right, Scotty Pippen. He's feeling it. It's tied once again. Pippen has gotten some help from others here in the second half. Oh, absolutely. And again, Studi kicking it off with the triples. But you know, th this is a Vanderbilt team that I think can struggle to score in the half court at times. I think it's been important that they've gotten these turnovers to take some of the pressure off that half court offense. Vandy back in front. It's a one-point Commodore lead. Here's Shackelford fading on the three. 16th offensive rebound for Bama. It's been their saving grace. Another one. They get Pippen for a trip. His third. If you're an Alabama fan, every time Shackleford drives, you're holding your breath because the charge is waiting for him. He does a good job here of getting inside, gets the incidental trip by Pippen. Gave him a bit of a hip ride. So James Shackleford to the free throw line, two of two from the line tonight. Trey Thomas trying to stretch it out. Let me get warmed up. One of two. Seven foot of Robbins back on the floor for Vandy. Here's Pippen around him. Turned into a five out four. Pippen with the kick out. Lost it on the drive. Taken away by Alabama. Good hands by Shackelford to force a turnover. Bama's got five out four. Pippen late. To Miles. And rebounded by Chapman. Hip and cut off, left his feet again. Here's Chapman. Got it! Vandy's open up a three point lead. Oh. When do you bring Quinterly back out? Next dead ball. Rojas. No. It'll be Vanderbilt basketball. We step away for a timeout. The Commodores have claimed their largest lead thanks to the first three of the night from Rodney Chapman. Say, look, we know what plays we like to go to. We know what our late game situations are. But nobody has really separated themselves to say, hey, I am one of your best options in the last few minutes of the game. Right now, we're going with that starting five plus J.D. Davison. Quinterly and Shackelford, four fouls apiece. It was a one position game when these two teams met just over two weeks ago. Oh, the backcourt. I yeah. thought it was tipped. It was tipped, but I think Pippen got control of it and then went backcourt. The officiating crew says we missed the tip. I could be wrong. He got the tip, but when Pippen corrals it. I don't uh, know that he, I think yeah. Pippen let it yeah. outside of his reach, and so. Essentially an inadvertent whistle and Vandy will have a sideline out of bounds with 12 seconds on the shot clock Here's Pippen Robbins will shoot a three That could have been a dagger from the seven-footer 
in two threes in their first matchups. Quinterly quick move all the way down the lane and he drilled foul. Hold up. Robbins covering his head with all the foot traffic. They have said under the benches it's the fourth on Liam Robbins. It, it wasn't the foul. They got everybody riled up. It was the collision and tangling of bodies after the foul. Yeah, the speed of Quinterly. And then Quinterly pops up quick from this. A little bit of pushing and shoving. Pardon me, that's the fifth on Robbins. He was in an unfortunate situation there trying to guard one of the fastest guards in the SEC on a downhill drive. They're going to take a look further at what happened afterwards. I, I didn't see anything flagrant when we watched it the first time. No, and, and you know, I think the way Quinterly got up pretty aggressively and kind of kicks his feet back a little bit, and then I think that causes, instead of just the calm, get up, everybody, unpile, Caused a reaction from Vanderbilt, but I don't think there's anything malicious you can call there. From Alabama standpoint, you're saying, hey guys, let's knock these two free throws down. By God, let, let's get a stop. I mean, they had been playing so well defensively until this second half run by Vanderbilt. They continue to look at this under official review to see if there's anything flagrant at the end of it. We, we said a moment ago that this Alabama staff, due to inconsistency, doesn't know quite yet the most efficient lineup to have in at the end of the game. So in this scenario, you're down and there's two minutes left. What do you value most? It's a team that has not taken care of the basketball, but a team that can get downhill and shoot three. Yeah, and they're analytic junkies for yeah. Alabama. And so they study it like, all right, which player is our best defender with less than three minutes? Who's going to make free throws for us, field goals? And you'd like to have that balance. Uh, the unfortunate part for them is they haven't had much separation there. The one player they named was was Keon Ellis, and so, um, but you got to ride with your your veteran guards. Yes, Quinterly can turn the ball over. Yes, Shackelford can at times make some questionable decisions, but they're they're your two most talented players. You just got to challenge them to step up, get some defensive stops. After all that, simply a common foul on Robbins, who is fouled out out of the game. Nothing more. He had 16 in the last matchup, held scoreless tonight. 16 turnovers for Alabama tonight and has turned into 14 points for Vanderbilt. Here's Javon Quinterly. Came in at 75% on the season from the free throw line. Two of three tonight. Alabama only 59% from the line as a team. One of two. I think the first thing you got to do if you're Alabama is, is guard the ball and keep it out of the paint. I mean, that's what's leading to some of these open threes for Vanderbilt and getting to the free throw line. Here's Keon Ellis trailing Pippen Jr. Pippen created some space. Now a step through. No whistle on that play. Pippen's got 23. I know what he's trying to do, but you got good position. You're about to force a tough two. Don't don't try the flop. Just hang with it. Quinterly off the screen. Short jumper goes. He's got 11. Bama within two. Studi for three. Good shot. For Miles Studi. Miscommunication on the switch. Keon Ellis unable to get back. And then a blocking foul on the other end. That's a fourth on Chapman. And Ellis is going to try to trail Pippen. When he gets caught on the screen, he says, Shaq, take mine. But he doesn't take his. Studi gets his sixth triple of the game.
Quinterly back to the free throw line. Which is one or two a moment ago. Chapman felt like he was there. I mean, the forearm from Quinterly certainly looked like an offensive foul, but the positioning of Chapman might not have been there prior to the push off. That's 13 now for Quinterly. Four of six, six from the free throw line. Again, just one of two from the line. Two possession lead for Vanderbilt. And a foul up front. Quinterly, 40 feet from the basket, fouls out. Oh, Tom, what we talked about, the lack of consistent high IQ plays for Alabama. And that's much worse than a live ball turnover right there. Quinterly has been so good for this Alabama team, this program. This is the reigning tournament MVP. But in the clutch moments, you got to be more responsible that you cannot gamble at half court when you're in foul trouble. And for what? I mean, it's not time to foul. It's not desperation mode. And just an easy call for the official. Alabama used the 60 seconds allotted to replace their fouled out player to all together the team for a timeout you mentioned this early in the game We don't usually talk about all the guys around last year's team in March But that was not just a talented team, but a very smart high basketball IQ team Yeah, all across the board not just Herb Jones, but others. Uh, I will say JD Davidson is playing one of his better games as a quarterback and game manager Seven assists just one turnover for the freshman. So he's gonna have to come up in the clutch Lead the way for this Alabama team on the other end. Chapman missed them both. Davidson seven assists tonight for the freshman from small town Lido Hatchie, Alabama. Under a minute to play. Down four. Downhill. Davidson hangs. Can't convert another miss inside at the rim for Alabama. And a quick foul to stop the clock. And that's the fifth on Jaden Shackleford. Wow. I mean, this was a Vanderbilt team down 10 at the half. That had nothing going for them, but they kept showing the belief. I mean, I go back to the last stop of the first half, and they hold Alabama, and they're off the court sprinting and high-fiving, saying, good stop, good stop. They knew they could play better, and man, in this second half, have they ever. 48-34, the second half of play. Alabama is only 6 of 13 at the rim in the second half. Hey, they've missed some bunnies. It hadn't, you're talking about self-inflicted wounds, and all the credit to Vanderbilt. But if you're an Alabama fan, you say, we're, we're beating ourselves. This is Scotty what Scotty Pippen says, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're beatable. So, <laughs> that's what he said last night after the Georgia win for Vanderbilt setting up this matchup He wanted a rematch with Alabama. He got it He has had a Good offensive game if not an official one. Chapman struggling from the line Just can't get a break with the rim right now for Chapman good-looking shot just hitting every single part of it One of two, the lead is five. 45 seconds to play. If you look for Keon Ellis here, try to find one of your three-point shooters. Highest scoring backcourt in the SEC is fouled out of this game. Ellis gets it back. Clock ticking, trailing by five. Forced it, tried to get a whistle, did. Here's Pippen out front, and he jams it home. Vanderbilt up by a touchdown. Miles for three, big triple. Miles wasted no time, the confidence to knock down the shot, and with 19 and a half to play. You, you might lose a little bit of the speed with Quinterly and Shackelford out, but there's a lot of length out here for Alabama.
Wright will run a curl. Here's Pippen to the ball. They lob it out to Studi. He'll push it ahead. Vandy across midcourt before they get the foul. Cost him a few seconds. It's a third on Miles. Alabama every day in practice runs a three-point shooting drill where they try to hit a key number. It is a frantic drill. They are used to getting shots up quickly. Worst case scenario here, they're down six with seven, uh, 16 point nine left. And the issue for them is that those are going in in practice more consistently than they are in the game. This is a Vanderbilt team, second best in the SEC at holding teams 29 percent from beyond the arc. They've defended it well tonight. 24% for the tie. They don't just need a three, they need a stop and to get the ball back. Davison has to hurry. Miles is going to rise and fire. That's an air ball. And a foul on the baseline going against Chapman with 8.2 left. And he's fouled out. He's trying to get position underneath for the rebound. So Alabama goes to the free throw line. Chapman's had some big plays for Vanderbilt that time gets caught Shoving the player out of bounds on the box out I'll tell you Tom I'm so impressed with this Vanderbilt team and have been all season More so from the mentality mindset they go into a game expecting to win and disappointed when they lose And that's easier said than done when you have sort of that losing history over the past few years That is yesterday's news because this Jerry Stackhouse team is trying to be a Cinderella story here at the SEC tournament. Eight point two left. Five point deficit. Pippen fouled immediately by Davison. Bama led this game. 51 36 with 1409 left Since then Vanderbilt has outscored Bama 45 to 25 Only one Bottom four seed since this tournament expanded has made it to the semifinals. That was Vanderbilt Only five had made it to the quarterfinals Two from Pippen. Bama's got to hurry. Five, four. Vandy gets it ball. They take it away, and they're going to ice this thing with an 82 76 come from behind win. Vanderbilt in the second half outscored Alabama 54 to 38. Vanderbilt is not the best shooting team, they're not the most talented team.